Welcome to the Introduction to Paper Piecing, Part 2. The first thing we're going to do is let's get rid of the scary part of paper piecing once and for all. For years, people have been developing all kinds of ways to make sure you're stitching a perfect quarter inch seam so that all your points match up. Everything from stacking post-it notes on the bed of your, of your machine through expensive feet. But it's still frustrating. I guess after folks have tried so many different tactics, they're skeptical that this little piece of paper is going to make their piecing perfect. Okay, let's prepare those high-tech clothespins now. On this particular practice piece, we have six different pieces in the block. So we want to number all the clothespins and using that magic marker, just write a corresponding number on the clothespin so that when you put the fabric in, you know that's what goes in section four and so on. We have all our paper piecing fabrics lined up in a row in our pizza box and they're labeled with the clothespins. A little tip when you're doing a six or a nine because they're the same upside down as they are right side up. If you want a six, put a line underneath it so you'll know that that's a six. And the same when you do a nine, when you have a piece with nine in it. Put the line underneath the nine so you can tell the difference between a six and a nine. That will be helpful. And you also have to have your paper piece block printed out. So now we're ready to go. So we're at the sewing machine. We're ready to start paper piecing. Are you excited yet? I want you to take a deep breath and just relax. This is going to be a lot easier than you thought it was going to be. You no longer have to fear sewing that perfect quarter inch seam anymore. All you have to be able to do is sew on a line. If you can sew on a line and count, you've got this made. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our fabric, pieces one, and two. And if we were doing normal piecing, we would take those two pieces of fabric and we would put them right sides together and we would stitch. Again, we'd have to make sure we were getting that perfect quarter inch seam. Now, the only thing different about this method is we have our perfect quarter inch seam cheater sheet and that's your paper foundation. So the first and second pieces are ready to be sewn together. The only thing you have to be cautious with with the first piece only is to make sure that piece number one is showing underneath piece number one on your paper template. You don't want to reverse it this way, like so, because then you're going to have the brown there or the gold there instead of the teal. So we just want to make sure that we have it in the orientation that we want, that this is indeed piece number one. So it's going to go underneath piece number one on your foundation piece. And here's your quarter inch cheater. You're going to stitch piece one and two on the line between one and two. If you want to double check, and one nice thing about the stabilizer is you can very easily see the fabric underneath this so you don't feel like you're sewing upside down or sewing blind. You can also see very easily if you hold it up to the light that you want to ensure that all the lines around the piece are covered. And we've got that covered because we added that extra half inch all the way around. So let's put this underneath the foot 
and let's start our first line of stitching. Now, I have my machine set up for a short stitch length of 1.8. Some people, if you have a dowel, you could make it 1.5 on your dowel. It's in a straight middle position, center position, stitching. And I've got a neutral thread on here that will sort of blend in with everything that I'm working with. And we're ready to go. You can start right exactly on that point if you want to, or you can start a couple of stitches away from that point. It really doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is you want to stitch on the line. And that's sort of sewing 101 when we were taught how to stitch on the line. So take a deep breath. You've done your first step in paper piecing. That wasn't so hard, was it? What we accomplished was stitching piece one and piece two together, just as if we were doing normal piecing. The only difference is we have our quarter inch piecing guide on top so that we're sure all our points are going to be even. Now years ago when paper piecing first came out, people would just cut chunks of fabric and place it on their foundation paper. Most of the time the paper you couldn't see through like we're, we're using now. And that's when it got really confusing. It was hard to know where to lay the next piece and things like that. So let me give you a little tip how we're going to do that. We're going to flip it back over on the paper side. And you see that line that we just stitched on. We're going to take that cardstock template that we talked about in our directions and we're going to lay it right on that line, folding our foundation paper over. This is where that add a ruler or add a quarter really comes in handy because it actually rides right along the ridge of that cardstock. So we're going to put that down just like that. Take our trusty rotary cutter and cut. And just like that, we have a perfect quarter inch seam without a special foot or anything else. Pretty slick, huh? Now while we're at it, so that we know where to put everything else, because you can see that we're overlapping more than a quarter of an inch around the rest of the block, let's just go ahead and trim those two. So we'll put our template again on the stitching line, pull our fabric paper back. Right here we kind of stitched off the line a little bit, but we pull it and it's okay. It lays back flat again. Let's lay our qu add a quarter ruler down and trim that off. Now let's go to the other side and do the same thing. So we'll have a perfect quarter of an inch around piece number one and we'll be able to place all the other pieces next to it knowing exactly where to put it. Instead of having a big blob of fabric, we'll have more accuracy. And it's hard for me cut at this angle with a camera in the middle of my view, so bear with me here. <clears throat> okay, so now we have a quarter of an inch all the way around. Both on piece one and piece two. Now normally I wouldn't suggest you cut both pieces at the same time. I would suggest doing one at a time. But since these pieces were the exact same size, 
it worked out fine for us. Now we're ready to press. With a hot dry iron, you can just press that seam flat. Okay, pieces one and two are joined. We're now ready to add piece number three. And the piece number three goes between two and three. So we're going to line up that piece where the seam's even. And just flip it over. And we're going to stitch along that line between two and three. Flip that over, finger press it down. I'm going to take it over to the ironing board or to the ironing mat and just give that a, a nice press. We don't have to worry about doing the seams because we had already trimmed those, remember? Okay, so now we have one, two, three, four, three pieces down. We're ready for our fourth piece. So let's get into our pizza box. Grab piece number four. That goes right here. So we're going to put right sides together on our fabric. Flip it over so we can use our cheater cloth to show us where to stitch. And let's stitch along the line between two and four. Okay, that's stitched in place. We'll flip that up. Do a little finger pressing. I'll take it over and press it with the iron. And the reason I'm not showing you that is because since I'm a one-man operation, I'd have to keep unclamping the camera and moving it for you. So it's just as easy to do it this way. So we have four pieces done. We have really nice points going on there. Now we're ready to add piece five and six. But before that we do that, we want to trim this edge a little bit to give us a little more reliable area in which to lay those strips. So just like we did before, we're going to take our template and we're going to put it on the stitching line for piece five. And we're going to fold our paper template back. We're going to take our add a quarter, and this actually doesn't look too bad, but we're going to go ahead and trim this off so it's a perfect quarter inch and we know where to lay our next fabric piece. And you'll notice how the add a quarter just slides right up along the edge of this cardstock. You don't have to keep placing it and making sure it's right, it just is. So then we're going to go to the other side where we're going to put piece number six and we're going to date basically do the same thing we're going to lay our template down along the stitching line for piece six fold our paper template back and putting down our add a ruler or add a quarter we're going to trim along that edge. And the bottom of it, it's just fine. We don't have to trim the rest of it all the way down. So now we have a quarter inch seam on both sides. 
and we're ready to proceed to finish up by putting piece five and six on our block. Okay, back at our machine, we're ready now to add piece five. And we're going to place that right sides together, just like you would normally do if you were piecing this regularly. We're going to place that right against that trim seam that we just trimmed. We're going to flip it over and we're going to stitch on the line between piece number five. So we have that piece on, and I want you to notice we're working with bias edges and the stabilizer paper foundation underneath your fabric is keeping your bias edges from stretching. That's the beauty of paper piecing. So I'm going to take this over and I'm going to press that. That's looking pretty good. Now all we have to do is add piece six and this block will be done. So again, we're going to take piece six and we're going to put it down right sides together, just like we would normally piece. I'm going to flip it over, take advantage of those quarter inch markings for us. So that we're sure that we're sewing accurately and we're going to stitch along this line. Okay, we're going to lift it up, do a little finger pressing. Let me take that over the pressing mat. And there we have one beautifully pieced block. Now we're ready to trim the final block. If you'll notice, we have a dark line all the way around the block, but there's also a real faint line around the block. That's the quarter inch guide. But if it's hard for you to see, I just take my ruler and place the quarter inch mark on the dark line and then trim. And I continue to turn the block around, trimming as I go. Again, make sure that you're putting your ruler on the quarter inch mark on the dark line that surrounds the block. That's a good habit to get into rather than rely on the drawn line that's showing on the pattern because there are some paper pieced patterns that don't give you that quarter inch margin around their blocks. And if you trim on the dark line, you won't have anything to seam together to your next block. 
So this is a good habit to get into. And this is our last side to trim. And now when we take a look at our final reveal, there's our perfectly pieced block. Look at the points. Do you see how they all match? And we didn't have to do any precision cutting. We didn't have to have any special contraptions on the machine to make sure we were stitching a quarter of an inch. We didn't have to worry about our bias edges. And each piece has a bias edge. We didn't have to worry about those stretching out of shape. And for those of you who complain that it's too hard to rip the paper away, I normally don't do this until I have all my blocks together because I do rely on these black lines to get perfect alignment when I'm putting my blocks together. But this is just done in an effort to show you how easy it is to remove the paper. There's one. And I always start from the outside edge. Um, I also keep my finger along the seam line so I'm not distorting the stitches. We do have a shorter stitch length, so that helps. We can take this one here in the middle. Rip that out. This is fun to do while watching TV. Or if you have family members who are always complaining that you're sewing too much, you can enlist their aid and let them tear the pieces out and they'll feel like they've contributed. And the last pieces come out pretty easy. I don't know how many seconds that was, but you can see now that our back is totally trimmed. Our front's done. We've, it's nice and soft. We haven't added anything to it. We haven't even had to starch our fabric. But we have a great block. I hope this is taking the fear out of paper piecing for you. So we are going to be starting our block of the month in mid-January. This is the quilt that we're going to make. It's approximately 54 inches by 70, all paper piecing. And I think you're really going to enjoy it and learn how to do the quilting also. To take part in our block of the month, Please join us at Sit Down Free Motion Quilters and get in on the fun. See you there.